open your Bibles again to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And let us read again our text. Verse 11 up to 13. Ten eleven to now let us read verse one to thirteen. For I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that our fathers were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and all were and, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink for they drank from the spiritual rock that followed followed them and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, with most of them, God was not pleased for they were, over, for they were uh, overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things took place as an example for us that we might not Desire evil as they did. Do not be idolaters as some of them were, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did. And 23,000 fell in the single day. We must not put Christ to the test as some of them did and were destroyed by serpents nor grumble as some of them and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now these things happened to them as an example, but they were written down for our instruction on whom we end, uh, the end of the ages has come. Therefore, let anyone who drinks, who thinks that he stands, take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. Now we are studying, we are dealing with this passage in line with our general theme of revisiting passages that we are so familiar with that we often neglect. And this is one of the passages. And this was written by the Apostle Paul to a church that has been blessed by so much blessing, with so much gift, so much intelligence, so much material goodness, that they almost suppose that nothing evil could happen to them because God was clearly on their side. And therefore, the general message of the Apostle Paul to them is, take heed, if you, st if you think you stand, you stand, take heed, lest you fall. And then the Apostle Paul went back to the history of Israel, referring to the Jews who came out from Egypt, that they were also blessed with so much demonstration of God's power. So much blessings of God, so much show of care, and so much of everything that they almost believe that nothing evil could happen to them. But lo and behold, they were all rejected by God. They were all, um, uh, uh, only two of them was, were able to enter the promised, God, the promised land. And the, pro, and the message is that even though you have great blessing, you still have responsibility over temptation. And then, in order not to discourage those who may be so much uh, struck uh, by this message of the Lord, of the Lord that would na baka mawalan sila ng pagasa, if that happened to Israel, if that can happen to the church, it can happen also to us. Yung ginawang ito ni Apostle Paul, he followed with a, an encouragement about temptation. One encouragement, he said, there is no temptation 
no temptation would ever befall a, a, uh, a the child of God. No temptation that are not of human kind. In other words, temptation that will come would be beyond, would be within what man can do. That no, you do not need to be a superhuman to fight against temptation. But the greatest, uh, the greatest encouragement is when God said, when, when Paul said that God is faithful and He will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation. He will also provide a way of escape that you may be able to ensure. So there you are. We have the great encouragement and assurance that the temptation are temptation designed for man within the power of man. And that God would limit the temptation so that only temptation that are beyond, that are within our capacity can come to us. In other words, Satan was not given a free reign over temptation. And this is where we stop and we want to continue yung portion na hindi, na hindi ko natapos noong uh, last Sunday. We, uh, the application, the two things I want now to discuss based on this truth about temptation, there are two things that we must always remember. Napakahalaga po ang intindi natin. Ang unang-una na katotohanan is that Temptation will come. That's very clear. Temptation will come. And secondly, if we ever fall into temptation, there is only one person to be blamed. And that is you. Only you. Because of these promises. Ito pong ating tatalakayin ngayon. Ito pong ating titignan. Lumapit muli tayo sa ating Panginoon. At tumingi po tayo ng gabay. Lord, may you be with us as we discuss these things. May you be with us, Lord, as we continue to deal with how you dealt with temptation for our forefathers and also for us, Lord, that we might be encouraged to continue to live holy lives. May you grant us, Lord, the clarity of mind and may you be with your servant to give the, uh, your message in a way that can be understood and can be uh, grasped by every one of your listeners and may you be the wisdom and the power of your servant thank you father in Christ's name amen so the first na obvious obvious na pinakikita sa atin ang lahat ng ating discussion na ito is that we will encounter temptation. We would surely be tempted. As you can see, Paul discussed how the Jews received so much blessing and much privilege from God and yet they faced temptation. You would think that with such a dealing of God, how easy for God is it for God to simply prevent any temptation to come to them. Napakadali na wag na lang padaling yung, um, yung tukso. But they were tempted and they fell. The Corinthians likewise were recipient of so much blessing that you again will be provoked to conclude that surely God will not allow them to be tempted. The Lord will not allow them to fall. And what they are told here is not what that they would be shielded against temptation. Now, uh, now they were told how not to... They, no, they were not even told how not to be tempted or how to avoid temptation, but simply how to face temptation and not fall. What they were told were not that they will be shielded, but how to face temptation. Clearly, what they are taught here is how to handle temptation, how to regard temptation or the proper attitude towards temptation with implication that you will surely face temptation. La tayo. Yun ang mensahe sa atin. As a way of conclusion, that's a message to us. We will surely face temptation. The very nature, the very nature of temptation will tell us that we can never be free from temptation. Every day, every moment, harap tayo sa temptation. We said, 
temptation, yung nature ng temptation, it is designed, uh, tempta temptation is an allurement. Yung, ang, ang, is an allurement, not as much as, not so much as to rebel against God. Yung temptation, hindi ito pag uudyok sa atin na mag tayo sa Panginoon. Hindi ito pag uudyok to fight against God, but temptation is an allurement to uh, to to uh, to seek and to indulge in things that could otherwise be uh, legitimate otherwise be legitimate temptation as we have seen is not so much as alluring men to rebel against god but rather alluring men to pursue their desire to pursue what pleases them uh, in disregard of God. It's not to fight against God. But tuloy mo yung gusto mong uh, hanapin, yung gusto mo sa buhay mo, in disregard of God. Huwag mong intindihin ang Diyos. That is temptation. That is temptation. Yun ang nature ng temptation. As recorded in the scripture, for example, yung first temptation. The first temptation was not to really fight against God, to leave God, to forsake God. The temptation was to pursue what could legitimately be a desire, to be like God. Desire to be like God. Desire the wisdom of being like God. How? Just disregard God. So the focus was not on fight to fight against God but to pursue what you desire and disregard God. Even the temptation of Jesus Christ was of that sort. Tignan niyo sa Matthew 4. He was not a Lord. He was not, uh, uh, hindi siya tinukso to fight against the Father. Anong sinabi sa kanya? Pursue what you want. Marilip ka dyan sa iyong gutom. Magkaroon ka ng glory before men. And makuha mo yung what you came here for, to be the ruler, to be the Lord of the world. But, gusto ng devil, iporso ito ni Christ in disregard of God. In the time of timing of God, in the way of God, in the method of God, ipinopokus ng, ng, ng temptation. Ang focus ng temptation is what you desire. It's what you want. And that really about fighting against God. James said that we are tempted not when we want to fight against God, but when we are drawn by our own lust. We are tempted not because we are angry at God, not because we do not know the value of God, but because our attention is focused on what we desire, what we lust for, and we fall to that temptation. And we saw in those temptations recorded in the gospel that all were tempted with regards to what is natural to them, what is natural to us, what could have been otherwise legitimate. Eve was allured with being like God. It was natural for Eve to desire to be like God. It was natural for Eve to, to desire to be wise, knowing good and evil. Natural sa kanya yun. And it's legitimate for her. Totoo yun sa kanya. Legitimate yun. Naghanapin niya ang lahat ng bagay na yun. But he was, she was tempted to ignore God in pursuit of that which is good. Alam ng devil kung ano magugustuhan ni Eve. It was natural for Jesus to be filled when he's angry. Meron siyang totoong katawan. It was natural and legitimate for Jesus to desire that he be glorified. He even prayed to the Father, Lord, glorify me before, glorify me before them. He was designed to re really receive the glory. It was natural for Jesus to desire to be the Lord of the world. He was designed, he was, uh, yung, yung, yung humanity niya, merong ganong klase ng 
kaisipan. It was natural for them. So every temptation, we are tempted with what is natural to us. Meron tayo mga natural tendencies that are otherwise legitimate. We all, uh, we, we have the natural tendency to seek sexual pleasure. But we know that it should be confined within marriage, but that desire is legitimate. Legitimate yun. We know we have that desire. We have desire for comfort. Ayaw natin na binabother tayo. Ayaw natin ng uncomfortable. Ayaw natin ng uh, mai, matutulog ka. Ayaw mo ng magulo. Those are natural desires. Ayaw natin ng danger. Ayaw natin ng mga may, gusto natin ng material comfort. Gusto natin komportable yung natin. Komportable yung ating hinihigaan. Meron tayong pagkain. Those are natural. But they become temptation when the allurement is to pursue these things in disregard of God, of God's timing, of God's desire, of God's place where we can express all these desires. So nakita natin, yun ang ating natural, yun ang ginagamit sa atin to allure us to take our eyes away from God and focus on that which we desire. And aside from what is natural to man, generally nat natural, we all have our own unique desires and tendencies. Bawat isa sa atin, hindi tayo pare-pareho. We are all unique beings. Psalm 139 verse 14 says, Sabi ng psalmist, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Fearfully translate from the original uh, connotes reverence, awe and respect, carefully done. And wonderfully this comes from the word which means so to be distinct. Mark out, to be distinguished. Bawat isa sa atin. We all have our own, uh, our individual idiosyncrasies. We all are different. Iba-iba yung ating tendency. And therefore, we all have unique areas where we can be easily tempted. For example, some are uniquely sociable. We desire friendship. We desire acceptance. And this is legitimate. We were all designed as social beings. Yung mag-desire mag, uh, ma, mag ka na tanggapin ka and you feel uneasy kapag you feel you're not accepted in a group or in a company. Those are legitimate and sometimes unique sa atin. Perhaps you are from a background that is deprived of such treatment, deprived ka doon sa inang iyong mga magulang o doon sa community na yung pinaglagyan, uh, na deprived ka nitong acceptance na to, and so you long for that acceptance or, some, or, or just perhaps you were made with a strong social inclination that you are not contented with friends, you want more friends, Di ba may mga taong gen, tinatawag nating extrovert, na pag nasa gathering, ikot ang ikot yan, at uh, nakikipag-usap, at uh, uh, very friendly. May mga taong introvert naman na uh, gusto nandoon lang sa sulok. So we, they face different kinds of temptation. Yung mga so-called introvert, wag mong masyadong gugulo. Naalala ko yung bisita nating tatlo na magkakapatid. Naalala niyo yun siya. Na sila yung naging member natin yung isa na nung mag umaten dito eh tuwan-tuwa siya sabi niya sa mga kapatid niya mga tol nakakita na ako ng church na bagay tayo sabi niya bakit? walang kumausap sa akin dun tayo so sila silang nag-start silang uh, uh, that was when we were much smaller nagsimula silang umaten eventually ang sa kanila ay naging member Meron namang mga church na, mga tao na, ayoko dyan sa church na yan. <laughs> Walang pumapansin sa akin, para akong laging bisita araw-araw. Parang tuwing, ano, bisita ako, parang pamilya sila na. So, 
may mga uniqueness tayo and we know how this can lead to temptation. Like looking for a church where you are accepted rather than looking for a church that is nearer the world, nearer Christ. So there we are facing different kind of temptations. Some growing up into uh, our, yung, uh, uh, some, are, uh, some of us grew up from poverty, desiring to have comfort, desiring to have uh, comfort for us and for the family. Sobrang hirap ng aming pinagdaanan. I remember, sabi ni, ni si uh, Imelda Marcos na noon, nung araw pa raw, ang pangarap na niya, sabi niya, pag ako nag Yumaman, bibili ako ng maraming sapatos kasi naranasan niyang pumasok sa school na naka uh, bakya lang o nakapalang. I don't know how true that story is. But when pag, pag nung, uh, when she was in power, so naroon yung temptation to accumulate more shoes. We all have different tendencies. Sometimes parents have been vocally proud of you, praising you publicly. And you know how good it feels to be praised. May pagmalaki ka ng iyong magulang. You know how good it feels. Lalo na kung may itsura ka. Tapos pagmamalaki ka, ang ganda-ganda, ang gwapo-gwapo ng anak ko. May mga magulang pa nga, pogi ang tawag sa anak nila. Pogi! And so the tendency ng mga bata na pinalaki ng ganito is to look for that same attention. That's why I, I said this is a danger of giving a celebrity attention on children. Nung araw, napipikon sa akin din siya yung mga member nung kasi yung mga anak ko malilit, ayaw ko nung celebrity attention. I do not allow them to give anything to my children. Lahat na dahan sa akin. I do not, ayaw ko nang pinaikutan at pinagagawa ng kung ano-ano because I've seen the danger of that on children. Kasi pag lumaki yung batang yun, mawala yung attention na yun eh. At pag nawala yung attention, maghahanap na ngayon sila. They will do things. They will perform para makatawag ng attention. You know where you came from. Others are unique in character. May mga tao na talagang very neat, very orderly. And you know, we found out that it's not even with the upbringing. May mga natural lang talagang ganon. Kasi kaming magkakapatid, iisa yung upbringing namin, iisa yung pinanggalingan namin. Pero may mga kapatid ako na talagang uh, sobrang neat na makikita mo yung pag may gathering kami habang nagtatawa ng kami, walis nang walis, tikpit ng likpit. So you know, uh, then you know your, your, your temptation to be angry, to be mad at others, to put on, on sa priority ng list mo, yung neatness. We know we are different. If we will examine and observe, we will see what area we are prone to temptation what we are attracted to. What we are attracted to, what we desire for ourselves. And Satan knew all this. And he desires that you pursue those longings to the point of ignoring God and stepping out of the boundaries set by God for morality, for its legitimacy. He knows how to tempt you. And you will be tempted for sure by Satan. When that opportunity comes, when that kind of difference or unique, our uniqueness will, 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 will encounter a situation that is ripe for temptation, be sure Satan will tempt you. And aside from legitimate desires and longings, we have remaining sins. We have remaining sins that is that we are trying that is trying to come out and trying to express itself. We have the remaining sin of pride. We have remaining sin of, of, of boastfulness. Although we want to control, but it's coming out. And we know the time that we we lumabas. Alam mong lumabas. You are tempted always. 
to express how good you are, to express how accomplished you are. We have remaining sin of envy. We feel bad when somebody is getting ahead of us, when somebody are acquiring things that we desire and we do not have. We, it may not be seen in how we react. It may not be heard in our voices. But you know from your heart that there is something boiling. There is something na, na envy. Yan ang sabi ko dun sa mga nag-split na church. Ang warning ko lagi sa kanila, Satan knows na pag may nangyari sa kabila, you will rejoice. At pag maganda'y nangyari, you will regret and feel bad. That's envy. That is envy. That is sinful envy. And you know your tendency. I strongly, I strongly uh, warn many groups that separated from my main church. You fight that sin. It will, ang, 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 ang solusyon dagi nun is repentance. Not just try to hide. Oh, let us pray for the church. But you know from your heart, you're rejoicing that something bad happened to the church. We have remaining sin of lust. We have remaining sin of lovelessness. That we can only love the lovable. You know, if you're, it's, it, you, you're, um, it's very difficult for you to love the unlovable. To love those who offend us. It's difficult for you to forgive when we, you are offended. You know your tendency, and that is sinful. You know your proneness to anger. You know your, 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 your things that makes you angry. I know I have, I've listed the things that can easily make me angry. My children know these things. And Satan knew these things. Peter described the devil as a prowling lion seeking whom he may devour. Indicating that Satan is never resting. He's prowling about. He's roaring. He's looking for opportunity where we he can bring us down. And you know what brings you down. In Ephesians chapter 6 11 to 12, Paul wants believers to put on the whole armor of God <coughs> to stand against the wiles of the devil, emphasizing his cunning nature. The word wiles of the devil is a military for a military, uh, military term. It means the technique, yung, yung, uh, yung paraan ng isang, uh, general on how to defeat the enemy. You know these things. But we will be tempted. We will face temptation. And so secondly, what I want to say, we alone are to be blamed kapag nahulog tayo sa temptation. We alone are to be blamed. It is clear from what we have studied that we are assured of two things about temptation. The temptation is of humankind and therefore you cannot blame God and say, Lord, the temptation that came to me is requiring a superpower. I need to be an angel to be able to overcome the temptation. No, God said, Jesus, uh, Paul said, they are of humankind and this temptation are even filtered by God in our study last Sunday controlled, measured by God to be sure that only temptation that you can overcome can come to you. And that with the temptation is even a way out. So ano pang kailangan natin para hindi tayo mahulog sa temptation? Ano pang sasabihin natin? Eh, kaya naman ako nagkaalit talaga ng usod dahil sobra talaga eh. There is no excuse some temptations, though, may be harder to resist than others. Some may be 
parang win lang kung ating lalabanan. And some you would, would require the plucking out of your eyes and the cutting out of your hands. But all of them can be overcome. That's the message. Because we were given, we were given everything that we need to battle, to combat temptation. That's the entire uh, message of what we have studied beginning verse 1. Even before we are tempted, God has already provided us all we need to win over sin and temptation. Do you know that? Do you believe that? Na bago pa lamang tayo humara sa temptation, ibinigay na sa atin ng Panginoon ang lahat na kailangan natin para tayo manalo sa temptation. When we were saved, we are already made victorious over sin and the devil. We were already vic victorious. We joined the band of the victorious Jesus Christ at the head. We all have the capacity. Faith is our victory. You got to believe. You got everything needed. Peter said, First P, Second Peter one three, is divine. Divine power has granted to us all things that pertains to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us to His own glory and experience. It sounds like nothing is outside at all. Giving you all that you need. All things to be triumphant over temptation. Philippians 4.13, that's why Apostle Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. That's the, that's, that's the message. No, I can do all ng, ng Philippians 4.13. Hindi yung kaya mong gawin na yung isang meme na Binubuksan niya yung lid ng bote. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. That's not included in the promise. It's all things to be holy, to be godly. Give me poverty, I can still be holy. Give me riches, I can still resist yung uh, uh, temptation of riches. Give me trouble, I can resist Turning my back against God. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. 2 Corinthians 9, 8, Paul further said, And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all time, having all that you need, you will abound in every good works. Is there anything more that is outside? Is there a temptation? Is he having all things except strong temptation? All things. He has given you all things that you may use for all time, for all situation, that you may abound in all good works. Wonderful God. Wonderful Savior. Wala tayong katatakutan. Ephesians 2.10, we are his workmanship. We are, we are God's project. For what? Created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. It is God who is working in us. That's why Paul said, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling for it is God who works in you, both to will and to do his good pleasure. We need initially at the very foundation to believe this. Do not believe the lie of the devil that you cannot. Do not believe your deceitful heart that the temptation is so strong. Believe God. Believe his word. We have everything we need to win over temptation. That is even before we face temptation. And then we are given his word. His word. He provided to us not only the word that is written in our hearts that can still be, the word written in our hearts can still be uh, polluted by 
false teachings and all. We even have the written word of God. Paano ba nag-survive yung blessed man in someone? Bakit hindi siya naaakit noong, noong, noong mga scuffers? Bakit hindi siya nadadala sa temptation noong mga sinners? Bakit hindi siya nadadala doon sa mga taong hindi kumikilala sa Panginoon? Anong reason? My delight is what? In the word of the Lord. And in His word, He meditates day and night. Now, if you are sending a general to a war, what usually, what usually is being being uh, implanted in their hearts and mind. Unang una, uh, yung necessity to win, yung mga techniques at mga lahat. But when Joshua was sent by God to do a very delicate and huge task, isa lang ang bilin ng Panginoon, ng, uh, Panginoon kay Joshua. Do not depart from my word. Do not turn to the left nor to the right. Do not depart. Ang king ng Israel, meron siyang isang uh, foundational task na dapat niyang gawin. Every king, every year, make a copy of the word of God. Meaning he has to read. He has to dictate. And somebody must read, must uh, uh, somebody must write what is dictated. So we are given everything that we need. We have the word of God. We have the graces and benefits of salvation. But also we are given prayer. Psalms 26, 41, watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. Can you make that clearer? I cannot make it clearer. It's plain. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. When you pray, you know that you are weak. When you pray, you know that there is someone who is stronger than you. When you pray, you know you need to be with God. That is even included in the Lord's Prayer that we have to pray daily. Part of the Lord's Prayer is not only to remember God is in heaven, not only to remember that God is the king and his kingdom is coming, but to pray, Lord, deliver us from temptation. Prayer is a strong tool against temptation. And you know when you are tempted. Now putting all this together, lahat itong tools na ito, lahat yung ways na binibigay ng Panginoon for us to win over temptation, Paul put this all together in a way of, of compressing to make it a, a pocket-sized tool for us to remember with temptation. He gave us Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 18, and let me read and see if temptation can still have power over us can still shake us down if we would remember all this. He said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, and this is the reason, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the evil one. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, meaning you already have it. It is provided. You just need to take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand, to withstand the evil day and having done all to stand. And what are this? Stand therefore, having girded your ways with truth. That's the word of God. Having uh, 
having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having geared up, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Holy Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayers and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to his end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. With all this, when we fall into temptation, the only one to be blamed is you. It could only mean we are indifferent to temptation. It could only mean we are ignoring God. It could only mean you are underestimating the power of the devil and, and, and temptation. It is never that you cannot. You and you alone can resist temptation. The Lord will not resist temptation for you. Your friends and your church cannot resist temptation for you. We are not equipped to resist your temptation. Only you can resist temptation. You have been provided with all. You have been provided. We have been provided with all. Wala tayong ipangangatwiran. Kaya nating takasan ng temptation. But the problem is we just refuse to take these tools, this way out. We ignore the word of God. We go through the day without devotion, without, without meditating on the word of God. We go through the day without prayer. We do not even examine ourselves. Jesus has triumphed for us. He lived a perfectly holy life to show us that we can defeat sin. He died on the cross to show us that there would be no more guilt, no more condemnation for sin. We are triumphant already in Christ. Do not let our indifference na magkaroon ng mga skirmishes with the devil that we would lose. We can win. Malalaman mo mga tao nagpapabaya sa kanyang uh, mga tools na ito. Alam mo, pagdating natin, pagharap natin sa pating Panginoon, all of this would be made clear to us kung ba tayo nahulog sa mga certain sins. Kung bakit tayo nadala ng ating damdamin. We were given the capacity and the tools to win over temptation. Let us win the battle. Let us work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. I hope I can say the same thing to everyone. But if you are not in Christ, you are at the mercy of temptation. It would just be a matter of time that you would fall. That you would fall. And if you still ignore the force of this message, and still neglect your prayer, still neglect, neglect the word of God, and still do not consider the areas where we can be tempted. May God have mercy on you. We are now in a period where the goats are being separated from the ship. May you find yourself among the ship. May you find yourself beating your breast and asking God for forgiveness. And making a determined resolution to truly fight against temptation. To take hold of the tools that we have. Let's all pray. O aming Panginoon, we thank you that you know, truly know and consider our frame that we are from dust. That you are not leaving us by ourselves to fight temptation, that you have given us the tools, you have so uh, 
filter temptation that only that which we can win over uh, ang ipinadadala mo, ang pinapayaga mo makarating sa amin. We thank you Lord sa lahat ng ito na nagpapakita that you really want us to live lives that is righteous and pleasing to you and good for our soul. Lord, may we take hold truly of all these blessings that you have given us that no one, Lord, would be indifferent sa mga mensahe na yung binibigay sa amin. And may you also warn those who are not in you, Lord, that they may fear to face any temptation without the strength that you are, have given to those who are yours. May you call them, Lord, to salvation. Bless your word, O God. In Christ's name. Amen.